The story of Lazarus being raised from the dead reminds me of something Woody Allen once said. I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. <laughs> Lazarus is kind of a straw dog in the Gospel of John. His character is there for Jesus to perform this astounding and essential sign of his identity and power. But we don't hear a word about how this experience impacted Lazarus' second shot at life. There's no ancient equivalent of an Oprah special or an Anderson Cooper interview to tell us what became of him after his passage through death, four days in the grave, and back into life. But that's not the point. This is a story about Jesus and resurrection. It's a story of Jesus redefining resurrection as something different than the standard theological teaching of his day, which his friends Mary and Martha and many of their contemporaries readily believed. Namely, that resurrection would happen in a future time. Graves would literally open at the last day, once the world was put right, and, is, and God's kingdom was restored to earth, and Israel could live in peace. Not all Jews believed this, but it was a prominent line of thinking in the Hebrew tradition. And it's not so different from the general idea that most forms of Christianity have perpetuated that resurrection for us will be in some future time, at the last day, into a place of eternal bliss. In the scene before this one, Jesus promises Lazarus would rise again, and Martha affirms his promise, saying that yes, she believed her brother would rise again on the last day. She answers like a model student of the Jewish catechism. But Jesus offers Mary and Martha a chance to take a leap from their theology to their faith. The writer Robert Farah Capon said this was a leap from resurrection in the future to resurrection now, to resurrection as the fundamental mystery of creation finally manifest in Jesus' own flesh. Jesus says earlier, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Capon again says, Jesus never meets a corpse that doesn't sit up right on the spot. In Luke, there's the widow of Nain's son, and Jairus' daughter, and now Lazarus. And they rise not because Jesus works some magic on them, but simply because he has that effect on the dead. They rise because he is the resurrection, even before he himself rises. Because in other words, he is the grand sacrament, the real presence of a mystery of a kingdom in which everybody rises. In baptism, we practice passing through death all the way to resurrection so that we can build the courage to practice it in our daily lives. At baptism, we renounce the forces of evil that seek to corrupt and destroy God's creation and creatures. We renounce all that draws us away from the love of God. We turn towards Jesus Christ and follow him into a path where we participate in his kingdom, in which everyone rises, and none are sacrificed as collateral damage for someone else's narrow vision of power and domination. We follow Jesus into a path of resurrection in which we strive for justice and peace and love of neighbor and respect for the dignity of every human person. These are daily choices we are given to make. We find it easier to imagine a world in which justice prevails, all have enough, and nations live at peace with one another as a world in a future beyond our lifetimes the way Martha and Mary thought of resurrection. But in baptism, we are challenged to take our own leap from theology to faith and participate in the here and now in God's kingdom where everybody rises. This is the life of a baptized Christian. We are citizens of the kingdom of God that is present and active and urgent, especially amidst the violence and injustices of our time. Jesus is the resurrection and the life in us, 
when we take stands for the resurrection of the world, of the creation, the resurrection of our nation, the resurrection of our own friends and families and communities. Resurrection is not only something that happens to us, but also a verb we participate in when we draw upon the love and power of God who raised Jesus from the dead, who raised Lazarus from the dead, and who raises us right here and now from our own dead places that need a tombstone rolled away. In our culture, we spend a lot of time trying to achieve immortality through not dying, from potions and pills and foods and exercises that would keep us young and forestall death, to artificial intelligence that offers whiz-bang promises that one day we might cure aging itself, and it offers us full access to knowledge in every field. We mistake eternal life for the achievement of not dying. Though we strive to live forever, we struggle to truly live. For all our human progress, we are sorely lacking in, humanit in humanitarian progress. Artificial intelligence might extend our lives and make us more productive and intelligent, but so far, enlightenment is a flesh and blood, heart and will project for the spiritual life of individual humans. I have a friend and fellow priest named Mary Haddad who quipped, there is no such thing as artificial enlightenment. When we give the newly baptized, which we will shortly, when we give them a candle after their water baptism, we say to them, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The light of Christ is the source of our enlightenment, our inner transformation. The light of Christ is the source of our good works. It's the clarity that illuminates our daily path as we follow the way of Jesus. No amount of AI and no medical breakthrough, no election, and certainly no politician can save us from the need to do our own inner work of becoming more enlightened, more like Jesus. Take this year's presidential election campaign in which the last day to vote, mercifully, is finally upon us on Tuesday. And with an election as close as this one is, where it really could go either way, we can bet on the fact that just about every other person around you, as many as one out of every two people, even here in these pews today, disagrees with you. Our work is not to root out our opponents and expel them from our lives. It is not to regard one another with suspicion. Our work is to embrace one another in all of our shared humanity and complexities, to listen to one another, to presume each other's good intentions and desire for truth, even when we feel incredulous. Our work is to love one another into friendship in which we each navigate life's challenges together. If love is our aim, eventually our paths will move in the same direction. Our work is to roll the stone away from the tombs of condemnation and cancellation we so easily bury each other in. Our work is to unbind one another from our tribal categories and labels and let each other go in love. Reconciling with one another will always be hard work and there will always be more to do. But to follow the way of Jesus is to do the work of reconciliation daily one difficult relationship at a time. In today's social and political climate, this kind of work sounds just as impossible as it must have sounded to Martha that Jesus would raise her brother from the dead. Martha needed to take a leap of faith, but the miracle was not hers to perform. That was up to Jesus. It takes work and it takes a leap of faith to believe that we can bring life back to our planet, to our warring world, to our divided nation, to our poor and to our vulnerable, to ourselves as we suffer our own profound anxieties. But as people of the resurrection life, 
We have every reason to believe these things are not only possible, but already underway. For our part, we have choices to make that favor justice and peace, choices that serve the common good, and choices that respect the dignity of every human person. This is our work to do for the resurrection of the world around us. The miracles are Jesus's to perform. He is the resurrection and the life. This is God's kingdom. We are just living in it. Let us live as citizens who participate in that kingdom so that all may rise. Amen. <laughs>